Good morning, Julie Hafen here. Today, we are gonna talk about what makes the first year at the airlines so challenging. I've been at the airlines for almost eight years now. Before I went to the airlines, I had so many pilots tell me like, dude, that first year is so hard. If you can make it through the first year, you'll be fine. And none of them really explained what they meant. So I just had to jump in and give it a try and figure it out myself. I was hired by SkyWest Airlines, they're a regional. Uh, it was August 6th of 2012 and training took, it was like two and a half months. I was done with all my training in the middle of October and I was living in Salt Lake when I got hired. I got hired, they gave me Palm Springs and the Brasilia, which I didn't really want to be flying a propped airplane because every pilot wants to fly a jet and I didn't even know where Palm Springs was. I had to like look on a map and figure out exactly where it was. It is a beautiful place, but I just, I, I wasn't set up there. So that was challenge number one because you get done with training and I think I had four days off before my first trip, which was almost no time. I mean, in training, I was so busy. I didn't have time to think of what I was gonna do. And then I got done with training and it was, okay, here's your first trip out of Palm Springs, good luck. Yeah, I hadn't found a place to live. I wasn't making enough money to like stay in a hotel while I was there because I was on call or on reserve. I had my grandparents, they lived two hours away. I just asked them if I could stay with them while I was on call. Obviously they were fine with it, but the hard thing was at SkyWest Airlines, it was a two hour call out. So once they called you, you had two hours to get to the airport and check in for your trip. I was on call, but they hadn't called me for days and days and days and days. And of course, the first time they called me, I just, I don't know, I didn't hear my phone ring. And I didn't notice the phone call for probably 30, 45 minutes. So I was already on that two hour threshold. And now it was, you know, I was gonna be not there until two hours and 45 minutes. I called him back and I was like, I'll be there. I'm gonna drive as fast as I can. That's like challenge number one, is just figuring out what you're gonna do and just being on call. Like I've never been on call before that, so it takes time to like figure it out. October, I lived with my grandparents. After a couple weeks, I realized it wasn't gonna work because I would basically have to be completely ready to go the minute I got the phone call. And usually I was on call at 4 a.m. Honestly, who wants to get up at 3 a.m. to shower and get ready in case you get called? Not me. For November, I, found a couple other guys who had gone through training about the same time as me who were also based in Palm Springs but weren't living there. And we decided to get our own crash pad. A lot of bases, especially the larger bases, have crash pads already set up. It's just a house or an apartment, basically somewhere for you to crash. They have them for flight attendants, they have them for pilots, just because it's a lot cheaper to do that than it's gonna be paying for a hotel for a whole month. Um, or months and months, depending on how long you're commuting. So me and these two other guys got a crash pad together and there was no furniture. I'm not lying when I tell you the only seat in the whole house was the freaking toilet in the bathroom. <laughs> I did get an ironing board. I would set up my laptop and watch movies and get on SkyWest website, propping my laptop, laptop on an iron board. There was two rooms and so I took the big room, but if I wasn't there, some of the other guys would use it too. But all we had was like a sleeping bag and you know, a few clothes in the closet. So I slept on this tiny little sleeping bag for an entire month with no seat in the whole house. We had a few dishes, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, I wouldn't want it to do it forever. Okay, so that was challenge number two was being in a crash pad. After that month, it was fine. The guys were great. I just never wanted to do that again because it was super boring. So then for December and January, I decided to try renting a room and I rented a room from a lady who used to be a pilot at SkyWest Airlines. She wasn't anymore. And so I just figured that'd be perfect because she would knew, she'd know how, you know, the schedules are, are not the same every month or every week. I was married at the time. So renting a room, like a tiny little room in someone's house, I just felt so out of place. I didn't have my own space in the kitchen. So I felt super awkward in the kitchen. So I didn't cook at all. Like I lived off of, oh, what's that cereal? Frosted flakes. Frosted flakes and almond milk is what I lived off of for those two months because I didn't want to cook in the kitchen. That was just not ideal. The other problem with it was that I was new at the company and so typically my on-call days were like Thursday through Monday, which my husband's days that he had off were Friday and Saturday. So I was home like Tuesday and Wednesday 
and part of the day on Thursday, maybe part of the day on Monday, and then I was gone the rest of the week. So I saw my husband like a few hours a week and that was it. And he would fly down on the weekends to come see me if I wasn't called in, so that did help. But it was just the commuting life, I don't know how people do it for their whole careers because I did it for just a few months and I was just like, I'm done. It's so stressful trying to catch the flights and then trying to get back home afterwards is also so stressful. It's just was not fun. So learning the commuting is another thing that makes that first year so challenging. It was probably halfway through January, me and my husband decided like, this just isn't working. And I just told him like, I just, I cannot do this anymore. So either we need to move down to Palm Springs cause I just, I couldn't get Salt Lake as a base. It was too senior. So I was gonna be stuck in Palm Springs for a while. So I told him like, we either need to move to Palm Springs or I just, I have to quit. I can't do this, it's too hard and it's not what I thought it was gonna be. And thank you to my husband that he was so amazing and so supportive because he said, no, let's just move. Now, guys, he had an amazing job at the time and he was you know, getting seniority or whatever you call it. He was moving up the ladder in his company, but he was willing to quit so that I could live my dream. So he's amazing. Anyway, plug for him. We started renting the apartment February 1st because I did not wanna rent that room from um, that lady anymore. Moved in February 1st, all that we had now in this tiny little, I think it was 900 square feet, one bedroom apartment. Like the bathroom was connected to the bedroom. So all I had in there was an air mattress and then I had a little table and a chair that I bought so that I could study. And I lived in that apartment for a month by myself. The saving grace though, was that in February, for some reason, I ended up getting a line. I wasn't on call anymore. I just would fly in the night before, I would sleep there, then I would get up, do my trip. And if I could get back the same day, I would. And if I just got done with my trip too late, I'd go to the apartment and then fly back in the morning. From that month, from February on, things started getting a little bit easier. Come March, I was back on reserve, but my husband was moving down. We were in the process of moving everything down. And so it just was so nice. And then he didn't have a job, so he just had to start job searching when we got down there, but it kind of made it nice. If you're from Utah, California's the vacation spot. On my days off, which were typically weekdays, so things weren't busy, we would go out and do stuff. We went on hikes, we took our bikes out to the coast and just biked all up and down one day. We went and saw the aquarium. I think we did everything except we never went to Disneyland just because we just decided we'll just wait till we have kids that are old enough to enjoy it to go. It ended up being really, really great. One thing I did forget to mention was this, the entire first year that I was at the airlines, I worked every single holiday. I'm not just talking like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. I'm even meaning like those Monday holidays that only banks get off. Like I worked those holidays, Valentine's Day. I couldn't get like my anniversary or birthday off. I basically had almost no control of my schedule, which was really hard for me because I'm a planner. That first Thanksgiving I had to work, this is kind of an embarrassing story, but we had gotten up super early for our trip, probably three or 4 a.m. We flew out to Bakersfield and I was so exhausted. I walked into the hotel room and I remember turning on the TV cause it had the New York Thanksgiving day parade on. I just fell asleep, like in my uniform, face down on my bed. <laughs> and I woke up three hours later and went to like go around the, the room to use the restroom. My door was open that whole time. <laughs> so I will never forget that Thanksgiving. For Christmas, I did have to work Christmas that year, but I had, it was three or four days leading up to and including the Christmas day, I had to work all of those. And so Christmas Eve, my husband flew down cause he didn't have work that day and I got to take him flying on a flight with me. So that was cool. And then we had the evening for Christmas Eve together. Christmas day I flew, but it was just from Vegas to Palm Springs and then I was done. I did still make it home on Christmas day, but honestly I was so big on the big family celebrations that it was kind of hard not to be there with my family on Christmas day. And my husband did his best to like cheer me up about it, which he did a great job. 
But still, it was really hard, like working every single holiday for that first year. It was around June or July when things started finally moving at the company. They started hiring a little bit more, and so people were able to start moving bases, switching airplanes, going from first officer to captain. It was around June or July that I finally got a line, which just means it was a set schedule. You know, I bid for the trips that I wanted, and then they were all in my schedule for the whole month beautifully laid out so that I could actually plan and have a life again. That was super nice. I was still really junior, so the first couple of months that I had a line, I was working every weekend, every Sunday, and still every holiday if there were any left. So things were slowly getting better, and then right around that one year mark, there was just a ton of movement in the company. And so I went from being you know, the bottom five of the first officers on the Brasilia in Palm Springs, all the way up to number five. And the amazing thing was, is that the four guys above me were all commuters. So they wanted long trips. They wanted four day trips. I lived locally and I just wanted one and two day trips. I went from working every holiday, being on call at 4 a.m. every weekend, to having a schedule on the weekends, to then being able to get exactly what I wanted. And it was right around that one year mark, which was perfect because before I went to the airlines, I had decided if I don't love it after one year, I was gonna quit and I was gonna go back to fly instructing because I loved it. But right then and there, I hit that one year and it just, guys, it 180, it was so much better. My quality of life was better. I felt a lot more comfortable flying the airplane. Just as a tangent, I used to always tell people when you get a new job, it takes about two weeks to feel comfortable in that job. When you become a pilot at an airline, it's not two weeks anymore, it's like six months. And especially if you are on reserve and you're not getting called out very much, so you're not working very much, it might even be a little longer. Like it could take up to a year to really, really, really feel comfortable in flying that airplane and doing your job. Right around that one year mark, I was feeling super comfortable in the plane. I was getting what I wanted. I would work these trips where I would just fly Palm Springs, Vegas and back. And it was two hours of block maybe. And I'd get paid four out, over four hours for it. And so I would do three or four of those a week and that's all I had to do. Or they had these amazing trips where I would just do one leg out to Santa, well it'd be from Palm Springs to LA, LA to Santa Barbara, done at 10 a.m., have the whole day in Santa Barbara, and then the next day we'd just do the same thing back, LA and then Palm Springs and be done. It was so much better. If you do decide you wanna be an airline pilot, you've just gotta make it through that first year. I promise you it will get better. You'll get better at bidding. You'll get better at flying the airplane. You'll feel more comfortable and confident and you'll build seniority so you'll start having a better schedule. If there's a question that you have about that first year at the airlines and I forgot to cover it, then just send me a DM, make a comment in this post later on, or you can even email me at trendypilots at gmail.com. I do check that email every day and I will give you a response. It was so good having you guys today. I'll chat with you later.